Hi, I'm Jim Owens. I'm the Mustang brand manager and I've been on the Mustang team around from Gen 4, Gen 5, Gen 6, and now Gen 7. And can't wait to talk about my favorite, most recent Mustang, the Dark Horse. And can't wait till you guys get behind the wheel. God, what a good message. Are we still on? Yep, Are we let's still go. going? Jim, Cut thanks it. very much for making yourself available to us. Thank you. Uh, obviously, with all things Mustang, exactly how long have you been connected to the brand? So I started uh, back in uh, 2020 or 2000, actually, a turn of it. Um, started doing NASCAR racing, NHRA, um, did the um, SVT Owners Association. Um, so started getting engaged in the performance vehicles with Ford. This is pretty much right out of school. No, no, no. I started in the 80s. I'm as old as the Mustang is, oh right? Gosh. So I started in 1986. So I've been doing it total 37 years. And you still run? I still love it. Absolutely. Um, needed a full frame off restoration, right? Like, you know, put me on a rotisserie, change my ligaments, some of my shoulder stuff. That sounds um, very expensive. It would be just like, just like when you refresh at 65, right? Um, but yeah, so I've been able to have the opportunity to work Worked on it from the Terminator days, 0304. Spent three years working for Carroll Shelby directly, and then came back to Ford Motor Company. Did the Boss 302, the GT 500s, the 50 Year Celebration, the 2015 Gen 6. Um, so yeah, I've had a lot of chance to be around Mustang, and it's been a blessing. And, and what we're curious about, we're going through some success. Yep. Obviously, Mustang has an amazing past. How do you build on that for both the present and, and which obviously is reflected in the 2024, yep. and, and then also the immediate future, well, knowing you can't talk about future. Yeah, don't talk about future, right? Would I it, have the 24th to talk about. What would you like your future perspective? Yeah. Or your perspective on yeah. that? So, um, you know, the sports car segment is something that has reduced over the period of time. Um, and it's reduced because there's so many more choices. Like you see here today, you know, Carl and his merry band of hot rodders brought a Raptor Ranger, a Ranger Raptor, an F-150 Raptor, and a Bronco Raptor. Mm -hmm. um, of the vehicles that aren't just made to get you from point A to point B, that choice has expanded, right. right? So that sports car segment where you did the millions of units, right? And Mustang did over a million units in its first 18 months of production, mm -hmm. right? You know, we've done more than 10 million Mustangs since 1964. Which is an absolutely um, amazing number. But as that sports car segment shrinks, and, and, and it's not the enthusiast, right? There's just more choices for them. Right. And so then you have to make sure that you design a car and you produce a car that sits on its foundation, right? From the six generations previously, but is looking forward. It has to be unmistakably Mustang. It has to be look fast standing still. It has to have that guttural growl. It has to have the internal combustion engine, mm -hmm. right? Because we do have our Mustang Mach-E. Right. You know, the GT that we have over here, 480 horsepower equivalent, zero to 60 in the mid 30s. Magna ride suspension, uh, Brembo brakes, performance tires, you know, that's not a Mach-E that you buy for range, that's performance, and that's why it's a Mustang. If you want the electric, you can have it, but what we've invested in is an all new 2.3 liter EcoBoost motor that produces 315 horsepower and 350 foot-pounds of torque, and the fourth generation Coyote motor that comes in two flavors, one in the dark horse at 500 horsepower, 100 horsepower per liter, mm -hmm. dual air intake, dual throttle body, red line of about over 7,000. Which is crazy. And a 486 horsepower Mustang GT. Mm -hmm. So that's how you kind of stage yourself. Like there are pieces of this car that are from all the generations past, mm -hmm. but then it is looking forward. So Chris Walters and Joel and the design team, edgy, sexy, looking forward to that younger audience, right? You're, you're building this basically for a six to eight year production cycle. Um, we don't talk about the production cycle on there, right? We don't talk, talk about, about future production. production. No, we don't okay. we don't do those type of things, right? Oh, but we're saying in the 24, right. um, we've invested an awful lot of money in the engines and all new sheet metal and all that type of stuff. Um, you know, the, the business case probably says that, you know, you probably want to do it for a while, but right now well, we're talking about the 24 model year. Well, and let's talk about this. You were kind enough to unlock it for yeah, us. Yeah, they like gave it? me the keys. They only let me keep it for a certain well, amount of time. The keys need to do that. The, the key, <laughs> exactly, because I have a tendency to lose them. Fair so enough. this is the all new Dark Horse, right? First new performance derivative nameplate that we've come up on the Mustang line in 21 years. Right? So I told you, looking forward, right? Instead of looking backwards for the bullets, which the, the, the mm -hmm. Gen 4 bullet was the first new one that we did, right? But the Mach 1s and the GT350s and Hot Country Specials and the California Specials, like, 
we needed to come up with a new name that helped reach to a new audience. And Dark Horse was the horse you didn't see coming. Okay. Right? The okay. Google image that you, when you search Google image on Dark Horse, what comes up is that horse you didn't see coming. Okay. And so, other thing on this, forward facing pony. First time, forward okay. facing pony. And as opposed to the profile. The profile, right? right? right. The left or right, left or right running pony has been on there since the first generation. Mm -hmm. Now we've had the snake on there, right? For, for the Cobras. Right. Um, you've had the Mach 1s and the 302 Limited, but you've always had the pony on it. This one is the forward facing with the nostrils that bring in that power and that air to generate that 500 horsepower or 100, or 100 horsepower per liter. Right, right. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, in ballpark terms, I know we can go to the spreadsheet, but yeah. what is this way? Yeah, about four. Okay, okay. Yeah. And uh, automatic or manual transmission? Automatic or manual. you got the 3160 Tremec box for the manual, mm -hmm. right, which was what in the Mach 1 and was in the GT350. MT82 is in the base Mustang GT. Okay. Um, and then the 10R80 is the automatic across the board. And do you have an idea of what your take rate will be on the um, manual? Yeah, so, I mean, historically, on the GT side, well, first on EcoBoost, we're only doing automatic now. Mm -hmm. We are still part of the Save the Manual campaign, right? Okay. Save the Manual, want the third pedal. Um, so we have two of the manual transmissions, one in the Dark Horse and one in the Mustang GT. So as the audience gets a little older, um, You're and, not talking about me. And, well, no, me. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm as old as the Mustang, right? Um, you know, you don't necessarily in the daily traffic driving, you know, you don't want to necessarily have to operate that third pedal. Um, the take rate has been going a little bit more automatic, okay. but on the performance derivatives, it still stays you know, much higher percentage manual than automatic. It, it, seriously, more manuals. Yeah, more manual. manuals than automatics that's on the amazing. performance Good side. For you. And that's because, well, like on the GT500, the last generation, we had the seven-speed dual clutch, mm -hmm. which is like a mechanical... Well, it's a mechanical or electromechanical manual transmission, right? right that can shift in 80 milliseconds. It's the fastest way around a racetrack. Mm -hmm. Now, might not be the most fun for you if you want to use your third pedal. So we have that third pedal here for the dark horse uh, with the Tremec box and with the MT82. Excellent, excellent. When do these hit the show? Mode? So what we're saying is early summer. Mm -hmm. You know, summer solstice is June 21st, right. right? So we're still thinking it is going to be early summer in the hands of our dealers. Okay, yeah, we're filming this on June 3rd, so oh, okay. within the next three weeks. Uh, yeah, we're uh, saying early summer. If one walks into a Ford showroom and wants to place an order on one, yeah, that's so, the approximate time to... So, um, you know, it... So how we allocate our Mustangs, right? It's the dealers get the Mustangs based on how many Mustangs they've sold. Right. So it really depends upon how your dealer sells Mustangs. Right. right? If they sell a ton of Mustangs, they're probably going to get them a little earlier and a little bit more of them. Mm -hmm. um, because we want them in the hands of dealers who have Mustang customers. Right. Um, so, I mean, it, the, the build rate... On the dark horse, it is, we do say, limited availability. Mm -hmm. um, the line rate that we can produce per week is substantially less than what is in the GTs and in the EcoBoost. Um, so that the, it will be a period of time. Right. One of these outlets that this will appear on is in Texas. Texas Garage? Um, yeah. And, uh, some Texas dealers? Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and I can't, because I'm Ford Motor Company, I can't, like, say one dealer over another. So you of, couldn't mention a Sam? Uh, well, I mean, I might have Sam's cell phone here on my, <laughs> but on my contract. It. But I can't promote to one dealer over another because all of our Ford dealers represent the Ford product. But if I can tell you uh, that Sam is huge Mustang fan cool. yeah. does a ton of work for charity mm -hmm. like and, and that's part of the giving back culture mm -hmm. of the Mustang community what? Um, and Sam with his collections of cars that he has I think he's gone from three to two garages now um, but like he is a huge supporter of Mustang and the Mustang community um, and he is always giving back so we love Sam well and of course we're here at Silver and Shelby's 100th birthday 100th it would have been Carol, his 100th Carol year yeah and he obviously is his Texas-based. Yeah, anybody. East Texas. Yep. Yeah. Um, and and son of a postal worker, then went out and did the chicken farming, and you know started his racing in the chicken farming outfit. And, and you worked for him for a few yeah, years. I worked for him for, from yeah, 2007 okay. through 2011. Do you have? And he looks very futuristic himself. So yeah, he um, so and he tell you that he made more things fail than he made work. Mm -hmm. Right. That's part of being a success. You got to be willing to try some things. 
So some of the things that he tried was but my favorite while I was working with him, volcanic ash brake pads. No okay. kidding. Right? So because he was like, hey, got sold it. Hey, you know, the volcanic ash and dust can dissipate heat as a natural substance. Why don't we make the brake pads out of those? And how'd that work? And it, it didn't end up working. <laughs> but again, he was innovative and willing to try and willing to risk it um, to put it all in to be successful. And when you do that, sometimes you're not going to succeed. Right. So he was doing hydrogen stuff back in the 2000s with the Cobras. Um, and he did it with California, I think Berkeley. Okay. I might be wrong on the school. Okay. Um, and then he also w was, even before he passed away, understanding that electric had to be there mm -hmm. um, as one component as one component of it correct yeah so no he was he was always somebody who pushed the envelope whether it be on his racing team his production team or his charity the carol hall shall be trust that does the foundation which supports the uh, technical college in texas that puts kids through school to be auto learning auto engineering and auto mechanics and then the organ replacement. Well, in the time we have left, touch on this Ford Youth Initiative. Okay, yeah. Which, which I guess is the gathering of young people yeah. to give them an idea of what tech is like. Well, now we tech. So, yeah, so um, we started this back at Barrett-Jackson in West Palm Beach two years ago. So it's part of the Shelby team, part of the Barrett-Jackson team, and part of the Ford team, where we invite younger kids from high schools in the VoTech program and community colleges to come in and get a behind the scenes look at Barrett Jackson, at Carlisle, at Woodward Dream Cruise, um, at those various events. And then we sit with them and, you know, at Barrett, we had Craig Jackson and Steve Davis, you know, those are the two guys that you see on TV, talk with the kids about following your passion. And it might be mechanical, but there's so many other things to do in the automotive and enthusiast world. Right. So all of us would talk. Scott Black would talk about the PR side. Um, we'd have Patrick Jeering talk about the agency side. We'd have um, Vaughn talking about the race side. Uh, me talking about the manufacturing side. And then to give them a breadth of experiences and why that car culture is important and that to pursue your passion and good things will come. And we got a chance to do it here uh, with about 15 to 20 kids. Um, and then we drew three names out of the hat. Well, one, we gave the, the female mechanic who was here. Vaughn and I chose her specifically. And then her, two of her friends drawing names out of the hat okay. got rides on the drift course. Cool. With Vaughn Gittin Jr., who is a two-time global champion of Formula Drift, out there on the chest track over there. And I, I, I'll show you the picture after we're done. The girl, when her face, when she took off her helmet, she's like... <laughs> like it, it's, and that's changing hearts and minds right. one lap at a time. Sure. Whether you're taking one lap of here at the infield at Carlisle or one lap at the Ford Performance Racing School, that's what we want to do with the younger kids. And in the sales environment, getting back to the show, yeah. for just the moment that we have a yeah. battery left, uh, with regard to the sales environment, do you think something special for sales reps in talking about Mustang to Mustang? So to in, the, in the past, yeah, I mean, we do some unique things on Mustang, but in the past when we've launched performance derivatives, um, when we launched the Shelby GT350 and the GT500 and actually the Mach 1, um, which isn't a Ford Performance, right? It's done by the base program, uh, but it's still a performance vehicle. Um, we went out and did what we called the North American Track Tour. And so what we would do is we'd invite the dealerships in, we'd invite customers in, we'd invite media and influencers in, and then competitive make customers, and have them actually drive those cars at Laguna Seca, at Sears Point, um, at Button Willow, at Texas, at Charlotte. Um, missing a couple here. Anyways, oh, at Sonoma, Sears Point. Um, where they actually got to come out and drive the cars in a lead follow session with our professional instructors. Cool. Because we want them to feel that, you know, that piece, right? When you buy a Mach 1, a GT350, a GT500, um, a Raptor, an Edge ST, an Explorer ST, a Bronco, you get included in that purchase price and experience with professional drivers, either at Charlotte or Park City, Utah. Bronco has four locations on the Bronco Off-Rodeo. We not only want our dealers to know how to enjoy it and feel comfortable, customers. we want our customers as well. Yeah, well, speaking of customers, that's probably a good point to end on, Jim. Cool, thanks, again for thanks so much. You can tell I enjoy talking about it. I love it. I can't wait till you in Texas get to do a burnout out there someplace in Dallas. We enjoy that very much. Thanks, Thank Jim. you.